Welcome to Food Theory, the only show on the internet that contains your daily value of knowledge in a single 15-minute serving. Now, unless you've been living under a rock for the last nine decades, you're probably familiar with this guy, Popeye the Sailor Man. Even though I don't know a single person who's ever watched one of his cartoons straight through, this dude has broken through and persisted in pop culture in a way that few other cartoons from that era have. He's an amusement park ride, he's a video game, he's a YouTube series, he's Robin Williams. Popeye the Sailor, and Popeye the Sailor. That one is a weird watch. Eat this spinach, it's seeing Davy Jones' locker. There's even a theory that Jeeps, you know, the four-wheel drive military vehicles, yeah, those things, they may have gotten their name because of Popeye. You see, in the comics, there's a character named Eugene the Jeep, an extra-dimensional dog-like creature, because why not give the really strong sailor guy a sidekick that can hop between realities? Anyway, because Eugene the Jeep was small and able to move anywhere, soldiers during World War II used the word Jeep as the nickname for their small all-terrain vehicles, and it just kind of stuck. But all of that is small potatoes compared to Popeye's true legacy. The aim to please. Using physical violence to solve your problems. Uh, uh, sorry, I got a bit too real there for a second. What I meant to say was spinach. Eating spinach to grow superhuman strength. Popeye's usage of spinach became so immediately iconic that according to the official website, Popeye not only contributed to a 33% increase in spinach sales, it did so during the Great Depression. One of the toughest times in economic history, and Popeye is just out here making dat green by eating dat green. And honestly, from there, the rest is history, with Popeye's love of spinach living on in parodies to this very day. All right, guys, I know this looks desperate, but I got this can of spinach. Oh, God, it's all watery. Now, well, this may sound like I'm winding up to say that this was the whole crazy beginning for spinach's claimed health fame. Actually not. The whole eat spinach to get strong thing actually started back in the 1870s when a chemist named Eric Von Wolf published an article reporting that a single serving of spinach actually contained a whopping 35 grams of iron. He was wrong. Very, very wrong. That would be the equivalent of chewing out a paperclip. The story always goes that he misplaced a decimal point in his calculations, thereby by misreporting the amount of iron in spinach by a factor of 10. But the real reason seems like it was more rooted in bad experimental design. And that, my friends, is why you never do your math homework using a pen. It's also worth noting, in an ironic twist, Popeye didn't actually start eating spinach for its iron content like everyone assumes. Rather, he did it for its vitamin A content. Going back to the very first time ever Popeye explains why he eats spinach, he says, quote, spinach is full of vitamin A, and that's what makes humans strong and healthy. Clearly, it's not what helps dem humans speak the proper English. Regardless of the reason the damage was done, spinach was cemented in the public consciousness as a superfood. But we says we hate spinach. Hate spinach? You has to eat it to get health, strength, and vitality. Suddenly, mothers everywhere were shoving stringy greens down the throats of their unexpecting children in the hopes that one day it'd turn them into absolute chads. And it would take scientists, get this, 60 years to find out that Von Wolf's numbers were actually wrong. So, with everything science and pop culture thought it knew about spinach suddenly thrown out the window, I wanted to start from scratch. Just how healthy is spinach? Are the health benefits just a bunch of historic hype, does it even still count as a superfood? In a story that has just been a cascading series of misinformation piled on top of more misinformation, does any of this have any meaning? Well, theorists, that is exactly what I plan to explore today. And the results are gonna give you a lot of fun talking points the next time someone tries to get you to eat your greens. Let's start where it all began. Is spinach a good source of iron? Well, according to the USDA, 100 grams of raw spinach contains 2.7 milligrams of iron. Considering an average person needs about 
about 18 milligrams of iron per day, that's about 15% of your daily recommended value. Compare that to kale, another green leafy vegetable that gets a lot of health hype. It has about half the iron content of spinach. Iceberg lettuce, literally nothing. Zero. Nada. So relative to other green leafy vegetables, spinach is looking pretty good. But compared to other foods? Yeah, spinach doesn't come close. 100 grams of beef, 20% your daily value. 100 grams of tofu, 30%. Dark chocolate, a whopping 66% of your daily value of iron. Heard that right. If you're eating spinach for its iron content and not worried about calories, you are better off eating chocolate. Making matters worse for spinach is that of its 2.7 milligrams of iron, most of it can't be absorbed by the body. You see, just because you eat something doesn't make your body able to use it. It needs to also be bioavailable. In other words, it needs to be able to enter the circulation when introduced into the body, thus allowing it to have an active effect. When it comes to the 2.5 milligrams of iron you get from eating a steak, 20% of that gets absorbed, meaning that what you actually walk away with there is half a milligram of iron for your system. The iron found in vegetables, meanwhile, has terrible bioavailability. A measly 1.7% of the iron in spinach is able to get absorbed into your bloodstream, meaning that what you really get is 0.044 milligrams, a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of what you thought you were consuming. Dark chocolate, meanwhile, yep, that has iron that's moderately available, about the same level as steak. So again, a huge point in favor of adding more chocolate to your diet and dialing back on the greens. But clearly, spinach has got to be good for other things, right? I mean, even Popeye was more interested in the vitamin A that it could provide. And yeah, according to our good friends over at the USDA, 100 grams of spinach contains 8% of your fiber, 34% of your daily vitamin A, 13% of your vitamin B6, 34% of your vitamin C, 22% of your magnesium, 5 of your calcium, 10 of potassium, and 28% of your daily folic acid. You don't have to know what any of that means, but you know, that's a lot of double digit percentages in the words that are on the nutrition label that you're supposed to care about. But you know what else has a lot of double digit percentages there? Dark chocolate with high cocoa content, five times the amount of fiber, more than double the magnesium, more calcium, double the potassium, 89% of your copper, 98% of your daily manganese, plus phosphorus, zinc, and selenium. Vitamins? Yeah, non-existent in chocolate. But in practically everything else that people brag about when it comes to spinach, dark chocolate is right there every step of the way, doubling or more the health benefits. All of this is before we even start considering portion size. When calculating all this nutrition data, the USDA uses the same weight across the board so you can compare like with like. That's why everything clocks in at 100 grams. But have you ever really stopped and asked, like, how much really is 100 grams? It's a lot. For something small and dense like black beans, it's over half a cup. For chocolate, it's a full chocolate bar that comes with a fair number of calories. But for spinach, which is especially light, it is a whopping three and a half cups. When you buy a bag like this at the grocery store, all those health benefits, to get those, it's assuming that you're eating literally the whole bag. And when you consider that the average serving size of spinach is one cup, I've gotta say, things are starting to look a bit bleak out here for our leafy green boy. And if you're buying your spinach fresh from the grocery store, boy, have I got news for you. Your spinach likely won't contain even half of those nutrients. Let's talk about grocery store delivery chains, shall we? You ever wonder how a grocery store is able to sell certain fresh foods year-round, even though, you know, foods are grown in seasons? Well, that's because most of the quote-unquote fresh produce found in chain grocery stores was actually harvested several weeks to even months prior to them ending up on the shelves. You see, in order to supply staple fresh veggies year-round, a producer needs to first extend the shelf life of the harvest. This process normally starts by chemically treating the foods, packaging them, and then placing them in a controlled atmosphere. These atmospheres are often low in oxygen and high in CO2 in order to slow the production of ethylene, the hormone that's responsible for ripening fruit. Yeah, I know, we don't typically think about fruit as having hormones, but apparently if you slow this thing down, you won't have to worry about your fruit going through fruit puberty anytime soon. Some of the worst offenders of this are apples, which according to an article published in Agricultural Research Magazine back in October of 2007, can be stored under controlled atmosphere conditions for up to 10 months before they hit a store shelf. So while your spinach isn't being stored for nearly that long, it is taking a couple of weeks before it even makes its way onto your dinner plate. By that time, most of its nutritional value has already been lost. A 2004 study found that it only takes eight days in a refrigerated environment for spinach to suffer a nutrient loss of over 50%. That means that by the time those leafy greens hit your stomach, they're pretty much just complicated water. In fact, from a health standpoint, you're better off eating frozen spinach than the fresh 
stuff because the other stuff gets frozen before it has time to lose all those nutrients. You know what doesn't easily lose its nutritional value? Dark chocolate, just saying. But hold on, theorists, because there's one more spinach health claim that we have yet to discuss, and it's oddly relevant now because we just got through a Winter Olympics where, surprise, surprise, and what seems to be an Olympic tradition at this point, Russia is suspected of doing something sketchy with their athletes. This year, it was a banned drug named trimetazidine. Before that, it was, well, it was a lot of different things. But back during the 1980 Olympics, it was spinach, kinda. Russia was thought to be using ectosterone, the main compound found in spinach extract, to better the performance of their athletes due to its adaptogenic qualities. Now, if the term adaptogenic sounds familiar, well, it's probably because the concept of adaptogens has been around for a long time, with the first known research on them being conducted by none other than the Soviet Union back in World War II. The idea behind adaptogens is that they allow your body to quickly adapt to physical, chemical, or biological stress. But, uh, science might disagree a bit. If you're planning on reaching your final evolutionary form by adding ectosterone to your diet, not so fast. In clinical trials, ectosterone was found to actually not have any effect on human performance. Sorry, but, uh, it looks like no one's body will be ready because of this stuff. So, considering all of this information, is spinach truly deserving of its title superfood? No. But, hold on to your acai bowls because superfoods aren't even real in the first place. The term was actually coined a hundred years ago by the United Fruit Company as a way to sell more bananas. Since then, it's been slapped on everything from berries to barley. According to a 2016 report by Mintel, between the years 2011 and 2015, there was a 202% increase globally in the number of new food and drink products launched containing the word superfood, superfruit, or super grain. In truth, many of the foods aren't better than their non-branded counterparts. The supposed health benefits that set them apart from the rest? Those were supported by studies specifically funded to find those benefits. For example, a 2015 study funded by the California Marketing Raisin Board, hmm, I wonder if they have a bias in this race, aimed to show that raisins were a healthy snack. And so they did it by comparing them to commercially processed foods. Huh, go figure. Imagine conducting an entire study just to see who's gonna be healthier. The guy that's eaten a box of raisins or the guy that's eaten a bag of potato chips. Apparently the key to having a successful product is just slapping the word super on it and calling it a day. So from now on, we're just gonna be releasing super theories here on Food Theory. Make sure you hit that super subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any of our knowledge boosting benefits. So there you have it friends, spinach, it's fine. As long as you consume it immediately out of the ground and eat a lot of it, then yeah, you're gonna get an okay amount of health benefits from it. Or, you know, the alternative is just managing your calories properly and eating some dark chocolate. The only bad news for Popeye is that it doesn't come out of a can. Speaking of super foods, super tasting foods that is, it's time to talk about our sponsor for today's episode, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered straight to your doorstep. No, it's a little past Valentine's Day, but time is an illusion, so I'm just gonna go on this tangent anyway. Basically, every February, I make it my sworn duty to do 14 nice things for Stephanie, one for each day leading up to Valentine's Day. And one of those things is almost always making her a home-cooked meal. Now, if you've tuned into this channel long enough, you know that I... It's not really my specialty. Oh, God, no wonder I feel sick. I feel no, sick. No, no, it's, it's, it's fine. You're, it's edible sawdust. But with HelloFresh, I was able to make the whole family something delicious for Valentine's Day that involved more than just two ingredients, pasta and jar of sauce. And if it can do it for me, then it can absolutely do the same thing for you. Look, would I like to prepare a fresh home-cooked meal every day? Yes, absolutely. But in order for that to happen, the stars have had to have aligned. I had to have gone to the grocery store earlier that week and made sure I got the right stuff and then taking the time to prep everything. It just doesn't happen. It is not realistic with my schedule right now. But with HelloFresh, everything is there. It's on my doorstep. It is ready to go. In fact, I don't waste food with HelloFresh. Their pre-proportioned ingredients means that there's less prep time and less wasted food. And I'm not the only one to feel that way. According to a study done by the University of Michigan, HelloFresh cuts down on your food waste by at least 25% compared to grocery shopping. And I can honestly attest to that. I just don't waste the food when it's coming from them, whereas when I'm left to my own devices, I can't think of what to do with it and it just rots in the fridge unfortunately. Not only can HelloFresh help save you time, they can also help save you money. If you go to HelloFresh.com and use the code FOODTHEORY16 you can get yourself up to 16 free meals and 3 surprise gifts. That is 16, 16 free meals plus an additional 3 surprise gifts. Just by using our code, you're not only getting your greens, you are saving the green too. What's that? I used that joke already this episode?
Look, writing scripts is hard, okay? I'm tired. So again, that's the link in the top line of the description, hellofresh.com, and make sure you use the code FOODTHEORY16 at checkout to get those 16 free meals and surprise gifts. And as always, my friends, remember, it's all just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.